Well, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and today I'm going to do my December wrap up. Well, this is the second day of the year and it's time, isn't it? Sometimes I don't do uh, wrap ups at the end of each month because I don't have a lot to talk about or nothing to talk about. So that's why you may not see wrap ups at the end of some of some months. That's what happened last year and and I, I don't want to be all the time telling you oh this month I didn't watch anything, I didn't read anything, so that's why it, it won't be posted a wrap up. I think it's kind of boring and <laughs> over the top and so that's why I don't warn you all the time. But if you were wondering that's why but okay this the month of december i read five books and i'm really pleased with myself because there were months last year that i that i didn't read anything so <laughs> of course i didn't start all of them in december i started earlier so i could catch up with the videos but I finished them all in December. So let's start with uh, A Country Christmas by Miss Reed. So I didn't... I'm marinating this reading still because as I finished it, I didn't quite enjoy it so much. This is a collection of novellas and short stories by Miss Reed. They are all surrounding the Christmas time and, uh, you know, the Christmas spirit and so on. But the stories that I enjoy the most were a bit sad. <laughs> and I was expecting it to be more festive, more joyful, more cold. No, it's coldy, but I was expecting something else really so this didn't really work for me for oh for all the books that i'm going to talk about i have a review video already up in my channel so i will link it in the cards and i will link it down below so for you to if you're interested in a more in-depth uh, talk you can go and watch them so yeah i'm I was a bit disappointed because I don't know I didn't feel that I brought something with me by reading them or that I was all that much entertained you know so yeah overall it wasn't really up to my expectations the next one I read was a Scandinavian Christmas festive tales for a Nordic Noel by various authors. So this is a collection of short stories by various Scandinavian authors. Uh, they are from Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway, I think, or no. Now I don't really remember, but you know, they are a collection of various nationalities from Scandinavia, of course. And again, this was a bit of a disappoint for me, or a disappointment for me, because again, I was expecting this to be, well, as the title, as the subtitle says, festive tales for a Nordic Noel. I was expecting it to be more directed to traditions, to myths, to mythology to um, traditional tales or um, folklore tales from the Scandinavia. Different countries, okay, but that was what I was expecting. And what you have here is an agglomeration of various short stories that randomly are written by Scandinavian authors and then they put them together and call it a Scandinavian Christmas. That's what I felt. 
Of course, there were uh, some stories in here that I enjoyed. I'm not saying the contrary, but there were three in 16, I think. So, and overall, I don't think it's, this has anything, anything to do really with festive tales. And, well, the ones that I talked to you about in my review video, not all, two of them. From the three that I enjoyed, two of them ha have to do more with festive Noels. But the other ones were, eh, you know, like, what that has anything to do with the title? That was my, this is my opinion, of course, but this was my takeaway from this book. So I was quite disappointed. So yeah. Then the tide turned around and I read Christmas, a history by Judith Flanders. This is nonfiction. And this is, as you may guess it, a history of the traditions that we celebrate during Christmas nowadays. But this is a peruse uh, through history since the 1500s till the more contemporaneous traditions. So... I really, really enjoyed this one. I learned a lot. Uh, of course, there were times in there where I didn't identify with the tradition, so it was a bit distant from me. But, you know, that was really a short period of time and I was always engaged in the reading. Uh, so I was really eager to continue reading, to continue learning and... Um, yeah, I was very interesting throughout my reading experience about this book. At the end, it eager my curiosity because Judith, she takes a, a page, a page and a half, yeah, that she titled Further Reading and she suggests other books by other authors regarding Christmas that she indicates for you to continue your reading about the traditions of Christmas and I have some I have my eye on some some of, the, of them and so I think that for next year and the years after I'm going to buy those books and read them <laughs> I know it's going to be repetitive, but uh, I think you can learn so much from this type of books and I love nonfiction. I think it's so fascinating to hear about in more depth about the subject. And yeah, I'm quite, quite excited. And I, in my review video in the box description, I put some titles that she indicates for if you have curiosity about them. So go to that video and go to the box description and you will see them there. Some titles that I am talking to you about here. So there you go. Then I read Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. This is fiction and this is... Um, story about different well it's divided in chapters and each chapter is for a different character of course along the reading you will be uh, coming back to some characters that you have read before so it's a continuum and they are all intertwined some of the characters are um, have um, familiar tides. Some some of them don't. They even didn't. They were strangers to each other. 
so you have a mix in here and this was really something i quite enjoyed it at the first when i first start reading it i don't know if it was because i was coming from other styles of writing from other authors that were more dry in terms of description but Rosamond Pilcher she is quite detailed I, I think she is not is not an exaggeration or anything but for what I was accustomed at least from the types of reading that I was doing till th that point I thought that Rosamond Pilcher was quite detailed in the descriptions of the clothes of the ambience of the landscape you know what i mean and as i was saying at the beginning i was feeling a bit dragged a bit stalling you know so i was kind of kind kind of begin to be a bit irritated because i wanted to go back to the plot and move on and she was like oh and she was wearing this with this and that and she was looking at this type of thing and so on and so forth you know and i was being a bit irritated by that and like <sighs> really move on you know but after a while i became I began to appreciate that and I start to feel that I, I was more into the story and I was more involved in the plot and in the characters and what they were feeling and what they were seeing, what they were doing, how they were presented, everything. and. It's funny because long as I was reading and further on in my reading, these type of descriptions began to be very appreciated by me. Um, so it was kind of funny how things turned and how my feelings towards this story and the style of writing changed, but it was for the better. And this story is very, well, it talks about loss. So if you don't want to read anything about it, maybe this book is not for you. It's not in a way that is dramatic or heavy or, you know, but if you are passing through a time that you really don't want to read anything about it, maybe skip this book for now and come back to it later. I think it's really worth it so um but it's not i mean it's loss in a way that someone dies yes but it's also loss in a sense that a part of your life is not as you want or you lost a partner in a way that you broke up not that a person passed away or something some of it is, but some others are not. It's also a loss in a way that um, you move on, you moved on from a period of your life. Um, you get out, you got out from a city and moved for to another country. Uh, you. Uh, quit your job so it's a sort of things that can be put together in the same category as loss but in different degrees but as i was saying if you're not wanting to read anything about it if you're passing through a time that it's not really indicated for you maybe don't pick this one up but again it's really fun fun well cozy and endearing um it's a sort of characters that are put together in the same house in scotland passing through christmas together 
and um, it's fun if you start reading this I would say like November and then it comes a point where it catch up to you and you will be like if you savor the reading you you will be reading the book um, at the days that the plot are happening or the story are happening so you will kind of be reading in real time you know that's quite fun i really enjoyed it it happened to me i was reading in the 21st i think and the the story was happening in the 21st so that was quite fun because i was expecting christmas and really looking forward to it and seeing all the excitement of the characters and everything that was happening or some of the characters i should say um and you know the preparations and the plans that they were doing and everything it was so exciting and so in the spirit of christmas you know so that was quite fun for me and it it put me really in the mood for christmas so there you go and the last one was also a collection of these i think are novellas now, i'm not sure if they are novellas or short stories but a collection of stories by stefan zweig this is a portuguese edition you will not find this specific collection i will think perhaps in your country you perhaps will find other collection but you know it's from the author and this this includes amok so that uh, the story who gives the title to this specific collection letters from an unknown woman and the invisible collection and i have to say that i was happily surprised because as you may know by now if you watch my videos i talked about this before i'm kind of gathering that i'm not quite the person who enjoys short stories or novellas of course i have exceptions and this will be one of them this collection because this really worked for me and i found the stories quite curious quite interesting uh, quite different also and my favorite was amok because it was so it, <laughs> it was like this i was uh, kind of guessing where the story was going for but then what happened next was so unexpected and so ridiculous in a way and the sort of events that consequentially began to happen were you know unexpected yeah i think that's the word i'm looking for i really really enjoyed it and i think that it's not my first endeavor in stefan zweig i from him i also read marie antoinette a biography from the queen of france and i really enjoyed his writing then and i have to say that this author from the second experience with him has a, a style of writing that i quite enjoy and i prefer he's an austrian author and he had an interesting and unique life as well i have another book by him the world of yesterday i think that's how it's called that he's that is his autobiography and I'm quite eager to get to it. But, you know, I really enjoyed it. I really think you should give it a try. If you don't, didn't, read anything, didn't read anything by Stefan Zweig, I think this will be a good point to start because this is a collection of stories. So you won't be, it won't be too long for you to get through them. And you will be able to have a taste in his style and in the type of writing of Stefan Zweig. So go for it. 
Okay, now I'm going to talk about the only movie that I see, that I watched this December. And that was Napoleon. I went to the, to the cinema to watch it. To watch it. To watch it. <laughs> and I have to say, well, this I don't think will come as a surprise because the critics are being quite harsh, harsh with this movie. And I have to say that I agree with the majority of people that have talked about this book. I didn't like it. I was with my expectations very high because I love the personality of Napoleon, not because I know so much about him, but as a general point of view, I think he is quite he's interesting. Um, and also because he was being portrayed by Joaquin Phoenix. I love this actor. I think he's excellent and very he delivers um, the characters that he portrays in a way that I think few actors do. So I was really excited to watch Joaquin Phoenix portray Napoleon. And the trailer gave um, some flashes of scenes that, in my mind, made this movie intriguing. I suppose that's the point of a trailer. But what happened was that, <laughs> in my opinion, in my perspective, the scenes in the trailer were like the juice of the movie. And everything that happened in between was like with a lack of depth. Because I think the, the director, it's really, really Scott, right? I think it is. The director wanted to encapsulate almost the entire life on, of Napoleon, at least when he came to some power. And, and I think that it, perhaps for this movie to work, it would be better to have accumulated the focus on a period of life of Napoleon, for instance, or the relationship with his wife or with uh, some battle or with um, a point in his political life because he wanted to encapsulate so much of his life that any, nothing had detailed points or depth to it and everything kind of stumbled upon something to another and you know even Joaquin Phoenix was in a harsh position to deliver like a point of view in in I mean in a portraying of that personality so I thought it was um, rushed it was although it is a long movie but I don't know, I didn't feel that I get to know Napoleon. And the scenes with his wife, I thought his wife was so interesting and a character that was so badly delivered. Not because of the actress, I don't think th that was it. I think it was the type of organization that the movie went for she was kind of she was there i mean i don't know how well to explain it she was there throughout the movie but i think her personality and her quirks and her influence over napoleon was kind of rushed and with so little depth but i think there's a a, a scene in the movie between them two Napoleon and his wife that she says something to him and I this is in the trailer and I thought it was going to have more 
interactions between them two and we were going to see her influence and her power um, in this in his uh, decisions and in his in him like a man or, or as a man but no it was one scene and then it talked about the affairs that she had and it it stays in the sur in the surface and i thought it was badly developed so yeah and i think it was more about engulf the whole life of napoleon and nothing allowed you to really know his personality or what he actually did for the history of france so i don't know i it didn't work for me i was quite disappointed at the end of the movie and i think that <laughs> I went with a friend and I told her that I will stop suggesting movies because the last ones that I suggested for us to go and watch were all disappointments to me <laughs> and to her as well. So I'm kind of going to let her choose the next times we'll go because I don't think that I make good choices of movies and I'm led to think something and then it's not what I thought so if you have um, I have some in my of course I have some in my list of wants to watch but I don't know if I'm going to I think I'm going to wait they come to streaming and not go and spend money in the cinema to go watch them because I think they will lead to the disappointment also <sighs> yeah so that is, that is it for me I hope the start of the year went well and you entered with the right foot and I'm wishing you a success, successful I never can say this word 2024 and yeah please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on all socials Instagram TikTok Pinterest uh, X Twitter and I think they are all. I have all the links down below, so go check them out. And yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye!